this is already happening. So this is not some speculative issue. This is a real issue. And the big, horrible part of it is that people often don't think of it until it's too late. I'm Vince Cerf, and I'm considered one of the co-inventors of the internet. Digital obsolescence, or what I often call bit rot, basically it has to do with the fact that digital recordings, whether they're, regardless of the medium they're on, uh, may be hard to read in 10, 20, or 30 years because the readers may not be available. You know, try to find a floppy drive reader, for example. And second, the software that correctly interprets this stuff may not run 50 years from now in the machines that are available. Think of all the things that you generate over the course of a lifetime that you think of as being important to your family, whether it's digital recordings or audio recordings or digital pictures. Digital preservation means that those objects, once they've been produced, can be um, accessible to future generations. You want your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren to know something about you and uh, the life that you lived and the things that you did. But we don't have systems that are available and, and are designed around the idea that ordinary mortals like you and me want to preserve that digital information for uh, other members of our family. So today, there are a number of institutions that are uh, trying to wrestle with this problem. For example, one guy, Brewster Kale, started an organization called the Internet Archive out in San Francisco. And his software is literally roaming around on the internet, capturing web pages and storing them away so that we can make reference to them in the future. And my uh, hope, frankly, is that we will uh, attack the problem in three different dimensions. The first one is purely technical. How do I devise systems that are affordable that can uh, store and, and maintain uh, information over really long periods of time. We also need to deal with the intellectual property problem of who is allowed to retain access to and make use of software. And so we need probably have to have a carve out in the copyright and patent law to say that if you're an archive that is trying to preserve content over long periods of time that you have the right to use software that might not otherwise be available. And finally we need to have business models that will pay for the cost of doing this preservation. It could be a charitable nonprofit organization that's doing this. The Internet Archive is an example of that. And so these three things have to be addressed sort of in concert if we're going to succeed in preserving digital information into the 22nd century.